Good morning, everybody. Hello, it's Kate Kaltoff, and we're going to do a buckle card today. And we're going to use the stamp set called Rustic Retreat. It's in our annual catalog. I'm excited to be here. Let me check. Oh my gosh, I think I've got lipstick on my teeth. Hold on. Can't have that. Of course, I just freshened up my lipstick right before I went on. And then I realized my coffee was cold, so I had to quick go heat that up in the microwave. We'll see how we're doing here. Oh, good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. Oh, yes, we have so many of you commenting. Hello. Lynn, I have to talk to you. I am going to, as soon as this is over, I'm going to quick uh, message you. Hello, Joanne. Hi, Connie. Hi, Deb. Oh, so good to see so many of you. Hello, welcome. We're going to have such a fun time today. We're going to make a couple of buckle cards. They're going to be sort of pretty much the same, using the same stamp sets. But the reason we're making two is they're so easy. I was actually put off from doing buckle cards for a long time because I thought they would be really complicated. And then I got a few in swaps and I started, you know, kind of really examining them. They're not that hard. You just have to, uh, you just have to kind of know, uh oh, did I put all my punches out? Oh well, I think I did, oh well. Um, you just have to really focus in on the measurements and get those right, because if you have your measurements right, everything else is gonna fall into place. All right, so good to see you. Um, what else, oh, oh my gosh, you guys, I have so many pretty cards to share with you. Five, five cards to share with you. Got them from downline members, got them from a couple of customers, so it's gonna be great. And I'm wearing a new shirt today. My husband got that for me yesterday. Of course, we kind of got it together. We went golfing last evening, and we had um, actually won a couple of prizes through the year, and so we had accumulated our little gift certificates, and then we went to the pro shop last night, and I picked out this new shirt. He could have gotten a shirt. It could have been me that gave it up. But honestly, he couldn't even fit another shirt in his closet. He is, okay, don't tell him I told you this, but he's a total clothes hound. He shops a hundred times more than I do. Like if I were to shop twice a year, he would be shopping four times a year. But seriously, he shops way more than four times a year. Um, I probably shop four times a year. He shops tons and tons more. <laughs> he, well, you know, and he works outside of the home, so he has to look good. It's just that he never really wears out his clothes and he never really grows out of his clothes. And so his closet, you could barely get another shirt into his shirt section. Whereas I'm all like relaxed and I don't have to have clothes special. And so my closet is almost like really empty. I mean, I can fit a lot more clothes in my closet than what I have. Oh, you guys are so cute. All right. Oh my gosh. Yes, my shirt is really comfy. Thank you for asking because it's one of these dry weave shirts. So it's going to be perfect for summer and it's got UVA, UVB protection because of course it's a golf shirt. All right. Enough chit chat about clothes. Let me flip the camera down and I will get started looking at, at, at the fan, well, first at the buckle card and then at the fantastic uh, cards that I want to show you that I got from downline members and customers. So give me a second to flip it down. All right, so here's the buckle card we're going to make. And isn't it pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. And it uses the new wrapped in plaid six by six paper and it's so much fun. And so what I'm going to do is show you what this looks like. We're just going to open up this little buckle. See, here's the buckle. Here's the little insert piece that goes into that buckle. Simple, cute. And we'll open it up. And on the inside, it says sending Christmas wishes. Honestly, I think I'm going to um, try to find a Thanksgiving stamp. I might make this as a swap card for my downline because our theme is fall and Thanksgiving for our next demonstrator swap. So... I will definitely um, maybe change that up a little bit for people that I'm swapping with in my downline. So anyway, this is the card we're going to make. I'm going to set that aside for just a minute because I want to show you some cards that I got in the mail. So the first card, and I'm so sorry that this has taken me so long to get this on video, but I got this card quite a while back from one of my customers. Thank you so much 
to my very good friend, Marty Graham. She, she used the Magnolia Lane Designer Series paper in such a beautiful way. Because honestly, you don't even need the stamp set or anything. You could use any sentiments because the Designer Series paper lends itself so perfectly to card making. So she, as you can see, she used the layering ovals. Of course, she has the wink of Stella pan. So she really Stella upped. She really stella this greeting and she made it all sparkly and gorgeous. And then it's just a matter of fussy cutting some of your really beautiful images out of that Magnolia Lane Designer Series paper. And right now that paper's on sale. So all of the paper that is our regular paper along with one specialty paper, which is our pressed petals specialty paper, you can get that. Buy three, get one free. That's a really good savings. And so um, if you want to stock up on Designer Series paper and have all of these gorgeous papers on hand, now is the time to do that. So thank you so much, Marty, for giving me this beautiful card. Of course, she decorated the inside, too, and she put a really, you know, she wrote in there and everything. I just love it. But beautiful, beautiful idea. And then just so that you know, how did she get this very perfectly inset design so it looks like it's framed? Simple, you guys. Just get the rectangular framelets. Stampin' Up! has those stitched rectangle dies that are fantastic and they will um just create beautiful framed inserts like this so absolutely so fun thank you marty okay the next card i want to share with you is from one of my downline members and she had been waiting for her heirloom frame dies and 3d embossing folders to come because of course they went on back order they're so awesome but let me show you real close so you can see how beautiful this is she took a four and a quarter by 11 inch card folded it in half and that makes it thin enough to run easily through your uh die cutting or embossing machine and then she embossed the um, heirloom oval over the top of this and then it's just a matter of using the stitched framelets what is that called the stitch shape framelets and then she stamped this with a thanksgiving or fall stamp set called gather together this is from my downline member cindy berghus and she is such a sweetie she just sent this this card to me as a rack card she just said random act of kindness here it is and i just love it so it's great because now i get to admire the gather together stamp set and bundle which I don't have but I think I'm gonna put it on my next order I just everybody's using it and it's so cool and and I'm kind of sad that I don't have it so I think I'm gonna go ahead and get it so thank you so much Cindy you inspired me to get that bundle all right so now the next card I'm going to share with you is from one of my downline members also and this is Sharon Merritt from uh, real close by she helps me a lot with my preparations for fall flare that we have coming up in october this is the over the moon stamp set with the twinkle builder punch as you can see popped up right here she's got a really cute little car cow card because that's part of that um stamp set called over the moon of course and he just looks so cute. Well, I think it's a she. She just looks so cute and relaxed and happy. And that's how I feel when I know I have Sharon helping me out so much with, with uh, Fall Flare. It's a really relieving thing. So thank you so much, Sharon. I love the card. All right. And the next card, also from a Downline member, and this one uses the Daisy Lane bundle and the birch background. Now, I do have the birch background. I haven't used it. Um, I think I've used it a couple of times, but I don't think I've showed it yet on a Facebook Live. And then she also used the Daisy Lane bundle. Uh, has this really cute daisy in there. And, of course, it looks so awesome when it's accented with one of our gold-faceted gems. And such lovely sentiments as well. So this was uh, Stacy Kratz, one of my downline members here in Minnesota, and I just adore this. So thank you so much, Stacy. It's so pretty. And then of course your sentiment on the inside was super special. So I really, really love that. And finally, the next card and last card that I'll be sharing, I just want to show you guys what an impact it makes to decorate your envelopes. So I cut this out because on the envelope that, that Kathy Kirchner sent to me, she had this cute little uh, birdie 
and flower in the corner of the envelope. And it just got me so excited when I opened up my mailbox and I saw it because I knew good things were coming. And I, I just, you know, I don't decorate my envelopes often enough, but even if there's just a little swatch of washi tape on the envelope or some little stamped image, it doesn't even have to be colored in, but you know Kathy, she has to go above and beyond. So she decorated this envelope so beautifully. I, I just might have to keep this with the card because it's so cute. So I love it. And here is the card she made. It uses the Bird Ballad uh, Suite and the Free is a Bird stamp set and the Bird Ballad Designer Series paper. And you guys might even not realize this, but that whole uh, product suite was our most popular set out of our annual catalog. So we sold more of that set than anything else that came out in the annual catalog back in June. So really fun and I love it and it's so gorgeous. And again, she wrote such a sweet note on the inside. She was thanking me for the product shares. And um, yeah, speaking of product shares, if you are interested in those, please head over to my blog at www.stampingtoshare.com. I'm sure every post, there's, there's a little picture on every post with a link to my product shares. Check it out because I only do product shares for one month. And so that those shares will end on the 30th, which is like in a week. So yeah, the 30th, yeah. So you if you want to do that, you better order them now because um, I will be putting one last share together for everybody who's still interested in that. So thank you so much, Kathy. I love the card and I love having you as a fellow demonstrator friend in Stampin' Up! You're awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead now and get started with our card. We are going to use wrapped in plaid 6x6 six six specialty paper. It looks like this. It's so cool. It's one of our more popular papers out of the holiday catalog. And then the Rustic Retreat is from our regular annual catalog. Um, and it's a great one. Of course, I love anything that reminds me of northern Minnesota or northern Wisconsin. And this is just so awesome for that. Um, and it has a cabin. Now, now we have a cabin up in Wisconsin, but it does not look like this. This, this is much more what you would picture a traditional cabin. Our cabin is actually a modular home. Um, kind of looks like a glorified trailer house, but I tell you what, we love it and we enjoy going up to it. So anyway, I will set this aside for a second. Oh, I should just quickly show you the paper. It has, you could use um, very vanilla or whisper white with this depending. So like this side, you could use very vanilla because there's no whisper white on this paper. But then on the other side, you know, you see some papers that do have a lot of whisper white in. So it's a pretty versatile paper pack and it's all, all the plaids with that gold foil stripe running through is fantastic. And then of course we completely forget about the other side which also has super cute images. And I believe this tree punch actually would fit in our tree punch. We have a new tree punch, but I haven't tried it out, so don't take my word for it. I haven't experimented, but it sure looks it sure looks like it would fit. And then um here is some more plaids. And then the other side, of course, just like, look at these cute little reindeers, so cute. Honestly though, I don't even think I've used the other side. Like here's some holly. And then on the last page, you've got some fantastic stockings because I'm just so enamored of the stripe and the plaid. So I've kind of been just using the stripes and plaids because I love it. All right, so let me grab all of the supplies. And as I mentioned, we're gonna make two cards. So we're just gonna make them at the same time, save a little time that way. And we're gonna start with our uh, dimensions of what we need here. So you are going to take a four and a quarter by five, I'm sorry, let me start over. You're going to take a four and a quarter by eight and five eighths inch piece of paper and score it at three and one eighth. This is important, because if you don't have it scored at the one, three and one eighth mark, you're gonna have trouble uh, if you're following the rest of the measurements, you're gonna have a little trouble getting that buckle to hold because it needs that little extra section on there in order for that buckle to hold if you're going to do it the way I'm going to show you. Oh, Deb, Deb, wonderful Deb. She just told me that the tree punch does work with that paper. So thank you so, so much. Okay, so that's good to know. So we have our papers here and I'm going to use my bone folder going to fold this in and I'm going to 
actually give this a pretty good press here on the back side because you want this to lie flat so that your buckle works really well. Because if it's popping up a lot, it might not hold your paper in place. So it's very important to give it a good, good score on the, or not score, but a good, good press on the other side. Then, this is so easy. Um, oh, of course I don't have the measurements on this. Oh, here it is, it fell off. Then you're going to take a couple of pieces of plaid paper from the wrapped in plaid and you're gonna cut them down to four by five and a quarter, all right? And yes, I know this means you have some sections that, that you're just gonna to have to save for another card because, um, because it is a six by six paper pack. Unless you can think of a different way to do this, that'd be great too. But the way I'm doing it is, um, I'm just using a lot of paper is how I'm doing it. <laughs> and, and why not? Because you get four sheets of each design, so why not? All right, so we're gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna glue this on because there's no wraps or anything like that to worry about. And I'm gonna use my multi-purpose glue and we're just gonna set this in here, wiggle it into place so all four borders are nice and even. And we're gonna do this one. And I know you guys love it when I do too because um, it's kind of nice. It just sort of cements it in your mind exactly. What the heck, how did she do that? What was that again? So so this way you'll just know because I'm doing two at a time right away. Okay, let's see now. Oh, I've got a couple of you saying Rustic Retreat is on your wish list. Yay, that's great. All right, now we're gonna do the next little part of this project and that is to gather some coordinating designer series paper. And this time you will be able to use a little bit more of that paper because we're only cutting it two and seven eighths by four inches. Why seven eighths, you ask? Well, it's if you are having this at three and one eighth, two and seven eighths will give it a quarter inch border on these two sides. And then of course your fours, that makes a another quarter inch border at the top and the bottom. So. Again, two and seven eighths by four inches, and then we're gonna put this down. So we're just gonna glue it all in place. And yes, I know I haven't punched a buckle, but we do that in a different step. We actually do glue all the designer series paper down first. Kind of rare, but that's how we're doing it. All right, so then I'm going to set this in here. I'm going to add a little glue to this one, we'll set this in here. And get that all in place. And I love using the glue because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the classic label punch. I know probably almost all of you have this. You're gonna open it up and you're gonna drop this part of the, um, of your flap, the front flap, straight in here and Oh, I didn't get this very even. I hope the glue is not... Oh, shoot. Well, it just looks like this will be my copy and I'll mail out this copy because obviously, with without having my head directly over it, I sort of missed the fact <laughs> that I did not get those borders straight. No worries. Whoever wins this drawing is not going to get this one. I will keep this for my personal sample. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna go in with your classic label punch, and you're just going to eyeball it so it is exactly in the center, all right? And then you're gonna make a punch out. You're gonna do the exact same thing over here. And, and you know, the reason you can do a punch out with this is because your own, you know, designer series paper is so thin, so it's almost just like your punching card stock. There we go. So we've got our two punch outs for our buckles. And don't worry, we are gonna extend this a little bit, but before we do that, I wanna do some other things and get some other things glued down because then I'll kind of know which way I need to extend it based on where the placement is. So we're gonna set these aside for a minute. We're gonna get started on a different thing. So I'm going to make one of these whisper white because you can see there's a lot of whisper white in here. And then this one, because it doesn't have any Whisper White or Very Vanilla, I think I'll go with Very Vanilla in here. So we're gonna grab two, uh, just pieces of scrap paper, and you're gonna cut those down to two and three eighths 
by three and seven eighths. All right, and you're just gonna cut two of them because we're making two cards. And these are just glued right down here in the center. Actually not glued, you're going to use snail. So I'm gonna take my snail because these are like mats. So what I do is again, I just eyeball it so it looks like it's pretty much right in the center. So what you're kind of going for is about the same on the right and left and about the same from the top and the bottom. So it's gonna look like that. You can do the same thing to this side. A lot of eyeballing here and same thing. Try to get it about the same from right and left as top to bottom. And that looks good. Yes, looks great. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to glue on another border so you have kind of a matted image here. So this is two and a quarter by three and three fourths. All right, isn't this amazing? We've done all this stuff with these cards and we still haven't even stamped. So for this one, it's gonna be a very skinny little border and that one a little bit bigger. I must have this one cut tiny, a tiny bit bigger, but that's okay. Use a little glue here. I'm gonna set this in. And that looks good. And again, that's a pretty skinny little border, but that's okay. And then I just must have cut that one a little bit bigger. I meant to make it more of a one eighth inch size border, but that one kind of looks like it's one sixteenth. Oh well. Okay, so this one's more more like what I was going for. There we go. All right, and now the next step is we're gonna do some stamping, finally, at long last. So you, again, are going to um, grab a couple of strips. So you're gonna grab one that's Whisper White, one that is uh, very vanilla, and these strips are two by seven inches, and then I've scored them at three and a half, okay? So this is where we're gonna do our stamping. So let me go ahead and we're going to actually take a bone folder here and just get this ready. Because it's not you're not gonna stamp it the way you think you would stamp. You know, normally you would stamp so that things open up this way, but actually we're gonna do it the other way because we have to have our buckle going in. So it you need to stamp it on the side where it opens from the left. That's probably about the only tricky thing to remember when you're doing your stamping. And again, just make sure that your opening is off to the left. Then we're gonna take uh, Early Espresso ink, and we're gonna take our cute little cabin from Rustic Retreat, and we're just gonna stamp it like this. And I'm just stamping in the center. And then we're gonna open that up and we're gonna stamp our inside panels. All right, so then there's some really nice, okay, so you already saw the Christmas sentiment, right? That's pretty, very nice. Very nice sentiment in that Rustic Retreat stamp set. But there's a couple of other sentiments that I think are pretty cool too. So there's a thinking of you sentiment, so I've got that inked up with Early Espresso. And we'll do thinking of you right, whoops. Yeah. We'll do thinking of you right here. Perfect. See how nice that looks? That's kind of really cool. Looks like a really neat little plaque that you would see in a rustic retreat. All right, and then the other one, we're gonna go with happy birthday. This makes a great masculine birthday card. So we're gonna put happy birthday right here. All right, now let me get my ink out of the way. Oh, you guys are so cute. Karen says she's never even seen a buckle card before. So, well, here it is, a buckle card. It's kind of fun. All right, now what we're gonna do is flip this over and make sure you do your white to white and your uh, vanilla to vanilla. And we're gonna set this on right over the top 
Well, now, did I do this right? Hold on. I almost, I'm sitting here telling you guys what to do, and then I almost did it wrong. We need white to white. So here's our white on top of white. We're going to set this in just like so. Then we're going to do the other one. That is our vanilla card. Oh, and Jean is telling me she's never seen a buckle card. Oh my gosh, I thought this was pretty common. I thought I thought I was the last one on the bandwagon. Oh my gosh, you guys make me feel so good that I'm not I'm not the only one that didn't really know about this or know how to do it. All right, so here we go. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it fits perfect. How awesome. So that one, I don't need to move up or down. But let's say when I got it in, it didn't fit so perfect. Well, you guys, it's not that big a deal. This one just happened to work out perfect. But honestly, most of the time it doesn't. And so when it doesn't work out perfectly, you just go in and you're putting it right to the back of the punch. And you're just going to take a little off the bottom or a little off the top, wherever it doesn't fit perfect. But somehow, by some miracle... This one fits perfectly. Okay, and that's the one that I, is this the one I screwed up? Well, you guys, I don't, I don't think it looks that bad. You know what? I honestly don't think it looks that bad. I think I am going to do this as a giveaway just because it turned out so nice. All right, and then there's this one. Now, we'll see. Did this one turn out just as well? <gasps> I can't believe it. I am so good at eyeballing. So this is the difference, again, remember we were talking about the differences between wives and husbands. This is so funny. So I was telling you about how Steve's a shopperholic with clothes. I am not. He's the guy that, if, I mean, this is why it takes forever for us to hang anything up in our house. Because he's got to like do a lot of leveling and he's got to do a lot of measuring and he's got to do, I don't know, he just does all these things. And so a lot of times I don't even tell him I'm going to hang something up because I just walk up, I eyeball it, I pop it up there and good enough. And somehow it always works out. So it works out for both of us. It's just that my way takes a way lot less time. So here it is. It worked perfect. And again, if this didn't work so perfect, if you would rather measure and you have a harder time eyeballing things, it's so easy to fix. I almost wish that this wouldn't have turned out so great so you could have seen how I fix it. But if you do need to fix it, it's no big deal. Just pop your punch in, go a little to the bottom or a little to the top wherever it doesn't fit. Oh, you guys are so cute. So you're, there's a lot of eyeballers here. Maybe it's just because we're crafters and we're just so used to, you know, looking at things and, and trying to find the middle of stuff. All right. So now how do we make the finishing touch on this? Because, because even by themselves, these cards are cute, but we can make them so much more, I don't know, cooler looking. So to do that, grab yourself a scrap of gold foil. And then grab yourself a one inch circle punch. And then just do a couple of punch outs here. Because sometimes if you do have to go up or down, um, it makes it a little bit looser. If it isn't fitting perfect and you have to make your punch out a little bit higher or a little bit lower, Depending on where that is, it'll leave a little bit of a gap. So then you could put your little accent here, which will help keep the buckle card closed. Or you could put your accent here. So wherever it isn't totally flush, if this paper isn't totally flush, that's where you want to put your accent. So again, you could do your accent down here and put a cute little ribbon like that here. Or you could put it at the top. So it's wherever you want to put it. I kind of um, think both ways looks cute. So looking at this, I think I'm going to go for the top. I see just the tiniest bit of a gap up here, whereas it looks like the bottom, there's no gap. It's really a perfect fit. So how do I do this? So what you're going to do is you've got your two one-inch circle punch outs, and you're just going to grab a couple of dimensionals, and you're going to drop those dimensionals as darn close to that corner as you can get. So there's one. Let me do this other one. There we are. Perfectly close. 
and take that off. Then you're gonna take your little gold circle punch out and you're just gonna set that on there so that it overlaps your picture just a little bit. You're gonna do the same thing with this other card. So again, you want your little circle punch out really, really tight. And I do two um, dimensionals because these actually get kind of a workout when you're doing that buckle in and out because who can't resist doing that? I mean, it's sort of an interactive card. You need this foil, you need this to stick on very securely um, because that's where some of the pressure point is gonna be. Then, and this is my giveaway, you guys. This is the ribbon I'll be giving away when you share or let me know that you've shared and you um, make comments. This is called the Shaded Spruce Striped Ribbon. And so I have one little bow made. I'll make the next bow on camera because I want to show you how easy it is to work with this ribbon. It's a pretty soft ribbon and it makes beautiful, beautiful bows very quick and easily. All right, so we're going to trim this up now with our ribbon scissors. And one more side. I need to trim this side just a little bit more. All right, then you grab the ever ready handy glue dots and you're just gonna put a glue dot right here. Glue dots are amazing, they hold so well. You're just gonna set this right there in the middle. So pretty. And then you're gonna do the same thing with your other ribbon if you're making two cards at once. And there it is, these are gonna be my giveaway cards. Do you guys love it? It's so much fun to do. So I guess I just wanna say thank you so much for being a part of the Stampin' to Share community. I truly appreciate you being here and supporting me. Um, oh, I almost forgot. I want to share with you that I am doing a giveaway next month for anybody placing a $75 product purchase with me in September using a host code. That host code is good through 10 one of 19. And here it is, so pretty. It's our toily, or our, no, I said it wrong. It's not toily. <laughs> I don't know why my brain is so stupid. It wants to say toily, but it's not. It's 12 tidings, glimmer dots. No, glitter dots. All right, so that's that. And then the other thing, of course, I want to share with you that if you love Stamping Up and you love to get your Stampin' Up products, um, consider becoming a demonstrator. Contact your Stampin' Up demonstrator and say, okay, I'm gonna give it a try. You, do, you for $99 can get a starter kit, pick 125 in products, and then it's freely ship, shipped and handled to your house. Really good deal. And you get to try Stampin' Out, see if, it's, see if it's for you. No big deal if it isn't, but at least you'll know. So thank you again, everybody. Have a great day. I truly appreciate you, and I'll do this drawing in a couple of days. Bye-bye.